CNM class. Today we're going over learning module five with our class 1015, where we talk about part two of the three parts that we'll be reviewing ICD-10-CM. So today we're gonna focus on some of our key concepts, which are sections 4.3 and 4.4, covering alphabetical index, tables within the alphabetical index, the tabular, and I also wanna talk a little bit about placeholders and how to build the code, which you'll be doing next week, as well as some of the activities for this week. Okay, so let's get started. We start off with chapter, uh, chapter four, we ended in section 4.2. So as we go into 4.3, we're talking about specific uh, usage of terms and how to look up a code within the ICD-10-CM book. I have here with me the 2019 edition that's recommended for this class. Keep in mind it's not a required book. However, this will be required for your next class in the fall if you're taking 2011 for ICD-10-CM coding. This is the ICD-10-CM Expert Edition provided to us from the publisher AAPC in the 2019 uh, book. You can get any publisher any years to look at if you would like to pick up a copy of an ICD-10 uh, code book. You can get an older one, normally for really cheap because they're no longer used in uh, practice after they've expired, which was uh, each year on January 1st. So if you want to get one of your own and look at some of the codes we'll be going over just so you can see it, that's great. I will be providing you with some more activities just as we did last week so that you can see a little bit of what it looks like. Okay, so the first thing to be aware of is that there's two different indexes. There's the alphabet, eh, alphabetical index and the uh, tabular index. And oftentimes they'll t say tabular list or tabular section or alphabetical section, but a lot of coders refer to them both as indexes. Just like when you're using a dictionary, you're going to start in your alphabetical, which is in the beginning of the book. And if you can see this in the video, it's the gray section that uh, takes up the majority of the book. And so about half of the book here is simply your alphabetical index. Now this is full of medical terms. And these medical terms are all built off of uh, names of diseases, names of symptoms, conditions, and also what you'll learn about, which is called eponyms. Um, these are, as defined here, an eponym is a syndrome or such as Cushing's disease. It's something that's named after somebody or named after a specific title that doesn't really make sense to say, uh, what body part or what system. So it, an eponym is a name for a diagnosis or a disease that is very specific to that, okay? Um, we look in here, and one of the things I wanted to go over is how to read the alphabetical index. So I've given you an example here, which also pulls some of the uh, terms that are on page 74 of your textbook, uh, looking at how we read if we were looking at an ankle abrasion. And I wanted to show you how it pulls up in the code book. So let's take a look. The first thing you would do if you had an abrasion to the ankle is you would look up the abrasion because it's the main term. It's the problem. It's the actual issue that is with the patient. And so you wouldn't want to look under ankle. If you did, it would tell you to see condition. And that's one of the really cool things about the alphabetical is it will give you guidance when you're in the wrong area. And that can also be a little frustrating because we can get in the wrong area very easily. So just be aware that at times, especially as new coders, you're going to be flipping back and forth between different terms, different synonyms for the same term and different uh, conditions and eponyms. So we start with abrasion, and one thing you'll see in the code book is a line that goes along the main term. So abrasion is capitalized, and it has a line going down, and everything that is related to the abrasion will be indented next to or below the abrasion. And so we see how ankle here has another line going down to identify it and is in a lower case. Most of your books will have it in lowercase uh, in order to help you do differentiate that the ankle is related to the main term abrasion when you're searching for it. It's very easy to get lost in your coding book if you're not paying attention to that because you may find yourself on ankle uh, with some other condition and you're not finding exactly what you need. So always pay attention 
where do I sit, what am I looking at, and what is it under? So ankle here is a subcategory or a subterm of abrasion, which is your main term. You also have below that anti-cubital space. And so I wanted to show you that. And you can see on page 74 how it shows you here where anti-cubital space would say see abrasion elbow. So this is an example of how you might read something in your code book where it will tell you to go to another area. Okay. So we go to abrasion, we have, let's say of the right ankle and it's an initial encounter, meaning that the patient just had this happen. Uh, they just had an abrasion today. Uh, maybe they fell off of their bike and they were riding their bicycle. And so this is considered an initial, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a moment. The first thing you would do is look up in your alphabetical index, abrasion, ankle, and then look to see if there's anything else in the alphabetical index. Always read up and down to make sure you have the right uh, category, that you're going to the right section. From here, it tells us to go to S90.51 dash. Now that dash is very important. That means that it's not telling you in the alphabetical the full code because there's so many options that you will need to look at the actual code to determine. And at times, you may still need to look at the other options to determine the correct code, even if it didn't have that dash. So never code out of the alphabetical because it's intended to take you to the right section. And when you get into chapter S90, which is for your, um, your ankles, your musculoskeletal, you'll find S90.51 and you'll see a few things in there in that tabular section. Okay? So that's your next step. I see abrasion ankle S90.51 dash. I want to write that down. And so I'm going to write down for my patient with an abrasion of the right ankle today. I'm going to write down, I'm going to start at S90.51. This doesn't mean it's the code I'm going to end with. I might find a different section that's better, but that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to look up S90 first. S90 falls under the category S90 through S99. And I've written this down for you so you can see kind of what it looks like in the book. Okay. So I'm flipping over in my ICD-10-CM on page 1091, for those of you that may have purchased this book, uh, and I see that S90 through S99 falls under the category of injuries to the ankle and foot. Sometimes it's not going to be directly below the category, the S90. You may have to go looking for what category does this fall under. Always start with your category when you go into your tabular. The reason for that is because you may have gotten directed to the wrong section in your alphabetical. It actually happens quite easily, but it should take you to the right area. And by looking at that, you can identify if something is in the wrong uh, section. So in this case, is an abrasion of the right ankle today an injury? Yes, and it's of the ankle or foot, so I'm, I'm in the right area. It's also very important that I came to this, though, because underneath S90 through S99 are excludes notes. Excludes notes means it's telling me things that will not fall under this category, and here's another area you can go to. So this one is an excludes two, and it tells me if this was a burn or corrosion, fracture, frostbite, or insect sting, I have different areas I can look at. And I can look at my, my definition of what's going on with the patient and say, no, it's none of those, and then keep coding. When I get to S90, I'll notice that there's a little symbol next to the code that says fourth. What this means is that there's at least another digit that needs to be coded. So S90 needs a fourth digit, and then S90.5 will need a fifth, and so on. And sometimes you won't go all the way to seven, sometimes you will. In this case, we will. There's also a note under S90 that says seven characters to be added for each code in category S90 are A, D, and S, initial, subsequent, and sequela. You may remember from last week when we talked about our guidelines that there are terminology for initial, subsequent, and sequela encounters. What this means is that during the initial period of treatment, a patient with an injury and some other conditions is considered in their initial uh, period of that injury. After it starts to heal, 
they fall under subsequent. So once the original healing is done, the original treatment, everything is processed and they are in the healing phase and they're getting checkups, then they fall under subsequent. If they have any late effects or uh, residual conditions that come up later due to the original injury, that's considered sequela. And we'll talk about more of that in detail when you get into ICD-10 uh, coding in class 2011. But for now, it's important for you to understand the differences, that there are differences, and that we apply those as a seventh character. Okay, so off of that knowledge, I already know from the get-go that I'm going to be initial because it happened today. Anytime an injury happened today, we're in the initial uh, period for that encounter. Anytime it's the first time the patient's seen for it, regardless of how long ago it happened, it's still going to be considered initial. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, okay, I know my seventh digit is going to be A. And then I'm going to keep going. Now, even though I was given from the alphabetical 790.51, I'm not going to jump there right away. I want to look at all the options for the fifth or fourth digit and for the fifth digit before I select that. So this is just temporary. I look at S90.0, which is a contusion. I look at S90.1, which is contusion of the toe. S90.2 is contusion again. And so I keep, as I'm going through this, there's a lot of breakdown from S90.0 that I just skip over. I don't need to read the fifth, sixth, and seventh character information for a, a code that has a, a subcategory that I'm not using. So when I said S90.0, it also had S90.00.01 and 02. But because .0 was not my code, I didn't need to read any further. Okay, so I'm on S90.3, contusion again of the foot. S90.4 is other superficial injuries of the toe. And I know it's not of the toe, so I keep going. S90.5 is superficial, other superficial injuries of the ankle. So you may remember from last week when we talked about the term other. Other means it is not classified within your options. And it was specified. Okay. Now in this case, we know we're in the right section because our alphabetical led us to go to other. So we don't have to question, should I be in an other category? We already know that abrasion took us here. So yes, this is the correct section, uh, provided that there wasn't anything further that defined our, our patient better. But when you find yourself looking at a code that's listed as other, make sure you look everywhere you possibly can. In this case, we will see the term abrasion listed as one of the subcategories from S90.5, so we'll know we're in the right area. But sometimes you won't always see that, so keep that in mind. Now, I'm at S90.5, and yes, it does match so far, although even though I feel like abrasion of the ankle is correct for S9051, I still like to glance at S90.8, other superficial injuries of the foot, and S90.9, unspecified superficial injuries of the foot and ankle and toe. So I want to look at that to make sure that nothing else could possibly describe my situation better. In this case, I'm dead on with S90.5, and I'll see that the first subcategory under S90.5 is in fact S90.51 and is correct as abrasion of the ankle. But I do have additional options. So I have, oh, and I have the wrong code here. So I have abrasion of the ankle of the right ankle, S90.511, and then I have abrasion of the left ankle, S90.512, 
And then I have S90.519, which is abrasion of an unspecified ankle. Here's why we don't want to use abrasion of an unspecified ankle. If a provider is looking at a patient, they should in their documentation state what they're looking at. Uh, specifically with injury codes, insurance companies will commonly deny you even though this is the correct code based off of the documentation. So always keep that in mind. For us now, we already know we had right ankle, so it's S90.511. And that's six digits so far. And remember we had that A? You'll see that there's a seventh digit character next to S90.511. And there's no further breakdown below this. So what that means is you have to go looking for somewhere within the notes, typically right below your main category, that will say, Seventh character is A, B, C, D, and sometimes there's several options. So always go and look for that, be aware of it. Always start in your alphabetical and then get to your index and look at each item within the category, subcategories, until you find your full code. If you do it this way, you will avoid uh, very costly mistakes and incorrect coding. So I'm gonna bring that A in. I'm gonna count my, my numbers, one, two, three, dot, four, five, six, seven, that does meet the seventh digit character, which some books will have a little check mark with a seventh in a box. Some of them will have them in a circle. Um, this is my correct code for my patient with an abrasion of the right ankle today. Okay, so one other thing we're gonna talk about, uh, neoplasm table and drugs and chemicals. Go ahead and watch the second video so we can go over those very specific details and I'll give you a couple more examples.